Praise God. This is Brother John here, and um, I just wanted to have a heart-to-heart talk with uh, my Facebook friends and whoever is listening to this, um, because I believe that God is speaking, and uh, I believe that uh, what I'm hearing from Him uh, is so important for us to know what He's saying for our region, for the HRM, for uh, Nova Scotia, for the Maritimes. And I believe that he's probably saying the same thing for all across Canada. But, uh, you know, I, I believe that I, I have a responsibility before God to uh, share. And um, I don't know if you saw my page there on Facebook. If you are not part of Facebook, um, just go to Revival Hour and you'll be able to see the um, the posting that I posted today. And, um, and it's, the title is Nova Scotia for Jesus. And then he says, our cities will come to God when his people get back to their knees. And then I say, get ready. Revival Hour is gearing to having the largest prayer meeting in the province soon. Whether it be in the HRM uh, or uh, or in in the province. Um, That's for God to decide. But uh, I believe that we need to get back to our knees. So um, uh, I'm going to start a series soon on uh, that. It's really hard. I mean, I'm, I'm trembling when I when I think about it. Uh, it's a new series that will be exposing actually the reasons why churches are not reaching uh, cities for God. And uh, this is not geared towards any church, of course, in particular. But it's just uh, have a responsibility to share what what's in my heart Um, and when I say exposing we'll be talking about the problems the destructions that we have the uh, the uh, lukewarmness which I've been talking actually in the past year about these things but um, I feel uh, a responsibility before God to um, to talk about these things because we need to reach our, our cities and we don't see that I was just talking to a fellow from Teen Challenge uh, a friend of mine from Ontario that he's very involved and uh, and he says you know Canada is one of the countries the worst countries that are not really reaching the lost um, for God and I can relate that because in our region we don't see we don't see a lot of that um, we don't see a lot of discipleship uh, you know doesn't matter if people get saved you know the 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 people stay at our churches that we disciple them you know jesus says go and make disciples of all nations so there is a lot that we're not doing and i'm just uh looking at it and it says god uh something needs to happen and as i was recording the other day and i came out of that recording uh for the radio uh as i was driving the lord dropped a bomb in my heart, a scripture. And I believe that that's, that's what started it all. And it says, you know, that the, the Lord added to their churches daily. Daily. Imagine that. That's scriptural. So the thing is this, is, you know, are we adding or are we allowing the Lord to add to our churches daily? New converts, new Christians. Are we discipling them? And it was just like a bomb, you know. And and uh, and, and I says, God, we're not reaching our cities for you. And um, so, you know, I'm going to be talking about leadership. I'm going to be talking about pastors. I'm going to be, you know, from experience, uh, where we can be sidetracked or we can be uh, off focus. Uh, because, you know, one of the things that I was... Uh, thinking about uh, recently uh, and is this is the scripture that it says you know in, in Ephesians chapter 5 that pastors and prophets and all of that uh, uh, the fivefold ministries is to equip the church for ministry so that means that the duty of our pastors you know we don't we don't expect pastors to do to do that but what the word of God says that they are there to equip the church for the work of the ministry. So that means that they ought to be equipping us in what? Spiritual warfare, evangelism. 
they need to be discipling us. Uh, they need to be having a, a, a goal to have uh, pray meetings and uh, follow up department and counseling department. There is a big task uh, for pastors and leaders. So uh, uh, we're going to be talking about the problems that that uh, that they face because I, I I serve as a pastor, I serve as an evangelist, I serve in many ways, so I can understand what they go through uh, behind the scenes. Uh, but we need to we need to get back. We need to get back to our first love with the Lord. We need to get back to uh, to um, our first works, which is telling people about God. Uh, so there is a lot that is going through my heart, and I tell you, I'm, I'm just uh, I'm just waiting and saying, God, this is going to be hard. And then I post it, you know, I says they know that uh, Revival Hour is going to have a goal, and that goal is to have the largest pray meeting here in the HRM or here in Nova Scotia. And that's right, because, you know, the sign of a good ministry, the sign of a good church is how many people are showing up to our praying meetings. You know, a lot of people say, you know, they, that God is happy. Well, I don't know about God being happy when every day people are going to hell. When every day people are dying without Christ. And yet we're, we're not crying out to him. We're not groaning. We're not, uh, we're not raising our voices in intercession. We're not fasting. We're not praying. We're not fighting. And, and, and most of all is that we're not training people in uh, spiritual warfare. That means that we need to, to teach people how to fight. How to, how to push back the forces of hell. How to kick the devil out of our homes, out of our marriages, out of our churches. And, and, and create that atmosphere where God can move in our churches and people can come and be saved and be disciple And all of that. But what's happening is that the, 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 the churches have become, it's is not a training camp. It's, it's how can I keep Christians alive for another week? Because during the week, what we do is we face problems. We face uh, what they're going through. So at the end of the week, we, find, we feel that as pastors and as leaders, we need to minister to the people uh, because they're going through it. They're depressed. They lost their jobs. Their business are not doing well. Uh, they're bankrupt. Uh, they have no money. They have no food. They have so it's need, 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 need. So how can how can we equip? the body of Christ in the work of the ministry when the church is so crippled in a way so crippled so I believe with all my heart that that we need to teach people how to do spiritual warfare how to fight and that's the reason I say God it says, you know, we're going to have crusade, we're going to have uh, miracle service, we're going to have revival meetings where people can come and do worship and, uh, and we can allow you to move and do whatever you're, you're good at. But I said, wouldn't it be nice if all the people that show up to these crusades and to, uh, and to these camp meetings and miracle service and concerts and all of that, if all of them showed up to pray? So April 14th, we're going to have an encountering, we're going we're gonna to encounter God. Uh, we're going to have uh, a concert, we're going to have, uh, <laughs> we're going to worship God, uh, and we're going to do a spiritual warfare. And my, and my prayer is this, that as we continue to do this, that we will, we will begin to create the largest prayer meeting that HRM and Nova Scotia have ever seen. And that means that people coming from all different churches. I mean, look at a, a Catholic priest was at our last meeting. Uh, today I was speaking to a guy from uh, United Church. And he comes to me and with passion in his heart, he says, Brother John, he says, I cannot wait for the next meeting. Because he knows that this is what is needed. But my responsibility before God is this. Is to train people how to live a victorious life. How to fight the devil. 
how to uh, kick him out of our homes, as I said, out of our marriages, out of our jobs, out of our finances, our bank account, uh, out of all of that. Because we can't expect pastors and we can't uh, expect leaders there on, on YouTube uh, to pray for us and all of that. We have the Holy Spirit within us. We have the name of Jesus. We have the word of God. We have the blood of Jesus. We have all that we need uh, to, to live a victorious life and to turn our cities right side up for God. But we're, you know, it's not that we're not interested in doing that, but it's that we're distracted. So here, here's my bomb to you. And I'm going to be advertising this one thing. Um, you know, my goal now, Revival Hour's goal, and Brother John's goal is this, is to have the largest spring meeting to influence people and to teach them, as I influence them, to teach them how to do a spiritual warfare, to get back to our knees and, uh, and to have the same amount of people or more come to our prayer meetings than to uh, the, the miracle crusades or the crusades or the anointing services, all of that. So that way people can come and, and see that in the place of prayer, that's where God will visit us. That's where God will turn things around in our province. That's where God will bless. That's where God will command his blessing upon us. And this is the last thing that I'm going to say. I think that you can hear my heart. This is the last thing. There was a, name, a fellow named John Knox. And there was a queen. Uh, where was the queen from? Uh, queen Victoria. Uh, it was a queen anyway. But the, the saying was that the queen fear the prayers of John Knox. And, and this is what I'm declaring. And this is what I want to happen. And I believe that God will make it happen in, in 2018. I don't know what month. I don't know what day. But I feel it that God is going to do this thing. To help us have the largest prayer meetings here. Where we will come. Whether it be once a month or whatever time we come together. And we're going to do warfare. Because the kingdom of God suffereth violence. But the violent take it by force. So we can't just be Mickey Mouse uh, stuff. We got to be violent. Well, that means that we got to know our weapons of our warfare. So listen to this. So the queen fear the uh, prayers of John Knox. And this is what I declare. Nova Scotia, the Maritimes, will fear the prayers of of this group as we come together we're going to push the powers of darkness away and listen to this now this is what i believe god is leading this i believe that as we come together and pray and to intercede listen to this god will begin to expose sin from the pulpit down god will begin to will begin to separate those that are for him and those who want to play church. And I believe that nothing. I, I, listen to this. This is the hardest, you know. I, I, I believe that nothing will be left untouched. I believe that God's mercy is God's judgment in a way. So that means that I believe that as we come and pray, God is going to restore in Nova Scotia, in the HRM, wherever we are, the fear of God. I believe that we need to fear God. You see, we have no fear of God. And that's why I'm saying, this: as we come together in prayer, in intercessions, in fastings, I'm asking God that he will expose the sin in the body of Christ. Because that will be his mercy. So that way we are judged here on earth rather than at the gates of, of heaven, right? That's what the Bible says, that they go there and Jesus says, where are you going? And I say, wait a minute, Lord, you know, I prayed, I, I cast out devils, I did this. And he says, I never knew you, workers of iniquity, get out of here. So we don't want that, right? So God's mercy is that he will expose it here. So and that's what I'm asking God, that God will expose the sins from pulpits down. 
And if anybody, listen to this, if anybody comes against the work of God, that God will remove that. Uh, the, uh, whether it be a person, whether it be an organization, whether it be whatever, I believe that it's time for us to fear the Lord and to make sure that we do things God's way. God never saved us to do it our way. The Bible clearly says that when he saved us, he purchased us with his blood. We are no longer our own. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now our path is the path that he has in store for us. So the path that he has in store for us is to fulfill his will here on earth. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Isn't that what we pray? So I believe with all my heart, and, and, and you know, I tremble when I think about this. I mean, I haven't even started the, uh, the, the, the series, but I know where this is going to go. And, and that's the reason that I'm doing a heart to heart. And it's really hard for me to, to do this because the very few friends that I have, I might lose. But I don't believe that. I don't believe that, that, that I'm going to lose friends. I believe that there is people of God in churches today that are crying out for the truth. That they want to see the fear of God restored to the church. Because that's our, that, that's, that's our protection. Fear in Him. The Bible says the fear of, of God is what? It's the beginning of all wisdom. So that means that it's a wise thing for us to fear the Lord. And it's a wise thing for us to win souls. That's the joy that is missing in the body of Christ today. And because of the hypocrisy. Because we're powerless. We're prayerless. We're not praying. We're not interceding. We're not equipping. We're not discipling properly. You know, how come, how come we expect pastors and leaders to pray for us when they don't even attend the prayer meetings? When they don't even, even <laughs> probably never fasted in their lives. But we can do it. I believe that the, the people will listen to the voice of the living God. And please, I don't want you to think that I'm, that I'm critical, that I'm judgmental. Oh, please. Grow up, grow up, and and if you want if you want to hear something good, l listen to my to my posting. You see, it's not what I'm against. Listen, it's not what Brother John is against. It's what Brother John is for, and for the Word of God. And I'm for whatever the Word of God stands for. I am just the male man. I am not the male. The only thing that I'm doing, I'm delivering the Word of the living God. So don't, don't, don't start criticizing and then shut it off and say, Oh, this guy is crazy. This guy is, gonna, is going nuts. He's going, oh, he's going in the wrong way. No. Show me in the word of God where I'm going in the wrong way. The Bible, the Bible teaches us that if we're not fishing, we're not following. If we're not winning souls, we're not wise. If we're not wise, what is the opposite of wise? Dumb, stupid, right? So that means that that that, that means that I, I am on to something. And I know that I have a group of believers that are standing with me, people that want to hear the word of God. People that want to that want to hear the truth. Uh, you know, because this is not the cry of of, of, of God alone. Uh, but this is the cry of the sheep. This is the cry of, uh, of the church. They want to see more than what they see. They want to see a God of the Bible manifested in the, in the churches. Oh, hear me. Hear me. This is not the voice of Brother John. No. This is the cry of God. But the reason that God is crying this out is because the church is crying out for more. That's what's happening. So anyway, I want all of you to think, pray as the Lord. Is Brother John nuts or is Brother John 
onto something. So then, if you really listen to the Lord, then he'll tell you. And then if he tells you that Brother John is onto something, then you're going to have to make a decision. Who are we going to please? Are we going to please the, the voice of man? Are we going to please the voice of God? You see, the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want your blood in my hands. I don't, I don't, want, I don't want to be disobedient to the Lord. I understand that I, that, I, that I belong to Him. I don't belong to you. I don't belong to anybody. But I belong to Him. He's the one that died for me. He's the one that rose again from me. He is. So I want you to pray. And I want, I want you, if you believe that what I'm saying is correct. If you believe that what I'm saying comes from the heart of God. And actually the, it comes from the heart of the church. If you believe that. I want us to start coming together. Not to listen to me. I want us to come together and together allowing the Holy Spirit to teach us how to do warfare in the heavenlies. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the powers of darkness. And as we come together, I declare to you, the backsliders will fear our prayers, will fear us because we will come to the throne of God with boldness in our hearts interceding for them interceding for pastors and for leaders interceding for the work of God interceding for, for the loss for the drug addicts for those the criminals those that are lost in, in deception those that are lost in different doctrines those that are lost in different religions and that God will have mercy and bring them in because no man comes unto God Unless God draws them unto him. But God cannot bring them to our churches. And remember, I'm not picking on any church. I'm talking generally. I'm not picking on any. But the reason that God is not fishing now. Is because the church needs to be fished first. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ. They must repent. They must come back to their first love. They must come back to their first works. We got to let the sin. We got to let the backslidden hearts out of our lives. And get right with God. So that he may have first mercy. The Bible says that judgment begins in the house of God. That's where judgment begins. So how can God save a dying world when the church is in a place of backslidden? Oh, come on, hear me. Hear me. God is onto something. And that is the mercies of God for the HRM. That's the mercy of God for, uh, for, the, for Nova Scotia, for the Maritimes. That's the mercies of God for Canada. So whatever you may be, whatever you hear in this message, that's the mercies of God. Let's get back to God. And just like the song says, don't none go with me. I will still follow him. I will still be sold out to him. I will still pray. I will still at attend the prayer meetings. I will still share the gospel with others. I will still be available to God. For the laborers are few. Oh, saints. Let's hear the, the voice of God in this hour. So, yes, I believe with all my heart. That there are people out there. There are people that are listening to me. I say, yes, Brother John, I'm standing with you. And I want you to write me. And we're going to create the largest knockout prayer meeting here in the HRM that Nova Scotia have never seen. And I tell you, I'm asking God. You say, no, uh, Brother John, don't do that. Oh, yes, I am. That God will expose the sin within the church. Whether it be sin in my life, whether it be sin in your life, whether it be sins in the pulpit, whether it be sins in the leadership of our churches, that God will deal because that's the mercy of God. If God deals with us here on earth, then we have time to repent. We have time to say, God, forgive us. God, restore us. God, renew us. God, refresh us. God can do that. But if we continue in our backsliding, 
uh, way. And if we die, we die in our sin. We die without the fear of God. So I believe with all my heart that God will restore. God will have mercy upon us. Anyway, so let's create the largest prayer meeting that HRM or Nova Scotia have ever seen. People coming from different walks of life, different, different denominations coming together, praying to the one true God. Hallelujah. Jehovah God. Through Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. I believe that this can happen. I believe that I have heard from the Lord. And the hardest part is ahead of me. As I begin to allow the Holy Spirit to, to show me and to expose the sin, to expose the, the, the obstacles that is keeping us from our prayer meetings, that is keeping us from being holy as He is holy, that is keeping us from all of these things. So in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, listen to the Spirit. Forget about me. Listen. Because if I die, because if I go to heaven, I know somebody else will pick up the torch and continue what God is doing. So, Father God, I thank you. I praise you for this time of heart to heart. Oh, God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I commit the listeners. I commit the HRM. I commit uh, Nova Scotia. And I ask God that you will bring people together as never before to pray, to intercede, to fast. The Lord, that the powers of darkness will fear this army of people praying and interceding. Hallelujah. In the name that is above every name. So, Father, I declare war on the powers of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, this is the move of the Holy Spirit in us, through us, for this city. This is your mercy. And judgment will start in the house of the living God. So, Father, start with us. Oh, God, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. And release your power. Release your anointing. Release your conviction, oh, God. And restore the fear of God in our hearts, in our lives, in our churches. That we may live holy. For without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So, God bless you. Pray for us. Pray for us. Pray for us and pray for us as we pray for you. Because we believe that this is a great day that we're living in. And uh, don't get mad at me. Don't cut me off. I'm a brother. I'm fighting for you. Because as we come together and we pray and we intercede, we all benefit. You benefit. We benefit. Your church benefit. Your leaders benefit. We all benefit. Because we break the strongholds of the enemy that have blinded us, that have bound us, that have oppressed us. And we can fight together. One can put so many to, to flight. Two can put more. And three can put more. And ten can put more. And a thousand can put more. Oh, the God will give us an army of warriors. An army of intercessors. An army of those that will get on their knees. And control the, 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 the realm in the spirit. That we will usher in the presence of Almighty God into our midst. That we will usher in salvation, deliverance, healing, wholeness in our midst. So I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And let us pray as we have, as, as Jesus has taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. That's it. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Come on, say that. Thy kingdom come. The kingdom of God is a kingdom, a supernatural kingdom. Let your supernatural kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. As we forgive those that trespass against us. Oh, I do that a lot. Let's forgive those that trespass against us. Don't hold no grudges. Don't hold anything. As we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. 
the power and all the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Love you. Pray for us as we pray for you. This is the day, this is the best hour that the Christian church can live in. Where there is lots of sin, grace abounds more. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.